live. From Television City in Hollywood. Plymouth, the star of The Forward Look. And the Plymouth Dealers of America presents Climax. Tonight, starring... Desmond, Marisa Pavan, James Dunn, Bill Stratton, Jackie Coogan, and now your host for Plymouth, Bill Lundy. Good evening. Tonight on Climax, the fabulous, glittering city of Las Vegas provides the setting for a gripping drama of fear and pursuit. It's set to the tempo of rhythm, song. Now on Climax, Keep Me in Mind, written especially for Climax by Jerry Davis. If you want the friendly comfort of a hand to hold, keep me in mind. If you want an arm around you when the nights are Keep me in mind If there's any little thing that you want done A song to sing and errands run Remember me, the old reliable one Now if you get that lonely feeling when the day a benefit, and he says he has an angle that'll be special for you fellas. What's so special? You mean he wants us to provide national news coverage? Oh, lay off. Dave, get off his back. Look, Warren, I like you, but I can't say as much for your client. He wants you to do anything to get his name in the papers, from petitioning the United Nations to endorsing Mrs. Orkin's noodle soup. And Pat, you boys read this file? I love this line. Modest Mike Owen. Yeah. Uh, fellas, he's got every act on his strip. All he's doing is a benefit. Now, but that isn't any particular interest to you, why don't you just skip it? That's all he's got in mind. You want to bet? Number zero. Uh, Mike Owens, how I'd love to get that pony. Just give him enough rope. Yeah, but somebody else might give it to him before I do. <laughs> okay. You get one clear shot when the photographers start taking pictures. So don't miss, make it count. Don't you worry, I'll make it count. What is Where's Mike? He's on his way. Every time I see those cameramen, the newspaper men, I start shaking all over. What's he up to this time? He's doing a benefit. That's all? I hope so. Well, why the newspaper men? Mike wanted it that way. Oh, he hasn't got enough to do. We, we close tomorrow night, then we got the recording session, and then we open in New York, and ten hours later, with five or six new numbers in the act, I gotta see him. Where is he? There he is. Go ahead. here. Miss Ginny Cabot, you all know her. She appears in the lounge. And if I may add very humbly, she uh, sings up the storm. <laughs> you said it was just us. This looks like a parade. Doesn't it always look that way when Mr. Owens is around? Sure, but I like parades. Hey, that gives me a great idea for a song. Oh. I 
middle of a parade. Hey, get me one on margin, will you, Phil? All right. Do you uh, think I could get unemployment insurance even though gainfully employed? Well, I got an insurance policy. I don't know if I got a suicide. It only makes a difference to the kid. All right, Warren, there's your story for you. This shooting ought to make great copy. Front page stuff all over the country. Milk it, it's your baby. Pardon me, Mr. Miller. Let's get out of here, Jenny. Well, they are. Fellas, you were looking for a story. There it is. Attempt made on Mike Owen's life. Only one thing wrong with it. What's that? The guy missed. just how far he would go. Hi. Mike Cohen. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Las Vegas police. Uh, come on in, gentlemen. I do for you gentlemen? Lay off. What? Lay off. You're leaving town tonight, so no more publicity stunts, huh? Publicity? <laughs> you don't think I'd... We think you'd pay a kid 50 bucks to pull a phony shooting. Get the place in an uproar for some free headline space. Now what makes you think I'd pull a stunt like that? Because a kid told us all about it after we caught him. Now, what we don't think is that you'd pull another stunt just to get publicity. Am I right, Owen? <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Excuse me. Hello, darling. Hiya, Jenny. Oh, I didn't know you were busy. I no, can no, come no, back. No, it's all right. Come on in. I'll be with you in one minute. Now, uh, uh, anything else I can do for you gentlemen? Remember that, and we'll forget about the other. Oh, yeah, uh, just one more thing. Yeah. After your last show tonight, blow town. What was that all about? Oh, just a couple of guys want my autograph. Those men were detectives, weren't they? Mm -hmm. It was about the stunt you set up last night. Oh, Mike, why do you have to do it? Why? Oh, look, Jenny, don't you start, please. Ward kept me up half the night with that same pitch. By the time he was through, I was so depressed I couldn't even sleep. <laughs> you know what I did? I got up, drove downtown, and had some ham and eggs. But that stunt was a foolish thing to do. Can't you see that, Mike? Oh, well, maybe you feel different when you see the morning paper. No, I won't, Mike. I I'll never understand it. But look, darling, you're on top now. You're not a kid trying to get a foot inside the door. You're in. But I plan to stay there. But you're a good singer. Publicity has nothing to do with that. Oh, don't kid yourself, Jenny. I knocked around Broadway and sang in piano bars for years before I got lucky. I didn't know how it happened. One day I met a young press agent who was just as zany as I was. <laughs> no stunt was too crazy or too wild, but <laughs> we tried them all and we made them work. And before I knew what happened, everybody in town knew my name. And from then on, it was a breeze. Now, that's why I'm trying to sell you on a gimmick. Something that sets you apart from all the other pretty girls. That but that's sing. not the way I want it, Mike. If I get there, I wanted it to be because people want to hear me sing. That's not enough, Jenny. You've got to have drive. You've got to do anything they ask you. And if they don't ask you, you have to dream it up for that's yourself. That's your way, Mike. It's not the only way. Oh, Jenny, believe me, your way is just wishing. And that's not enough. When you want to get to the top, you've got to Maybe go Maybe I don't want it that badly, Mike. Jenny, maybe your ambition runs in another direction. Say, did you ever think of switching your career to becoming a housewife? Mike. You know, making
making a home for a guy with maybe just a little bit too much ambition. Black hair that stands straight up on his head. Does he got soft brown eyes and absolutely no brains in his head? Yes, you're getting warmed up. Oh, I love you so, darling. I love you. I want to understand, but, but I can't. Sweetheart, don't worry about it. Don't even try. Let's just be happy with one another the way we are, okay? Okay. Besides, when I see how we made out last night, we'll forget all this nonsense. You know, with all the photographers taking pictures, some of those are bound to turn up in the morning paper. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if we even made the wire services. Hey, Jenny, you know what I'm going to do next? How could anyone know what you're going to do? Well, you know, Lou Palmer, the A&R man, is trying to get an okay for me to record right here in the hotel, in the big room after the last show. Would it be easier to do it in a studio when you get to New York? Oh, yeah, but who wants to do it the easy way? This is going to be a first. It'll make a big splash, and I'll bet it's worth all the extra trouble. You're impossible. <laughs> Have you picked a number yet? If I picked a number, wait till you hear this one. Get up. Oh, I think you're getting fat. You want me to give you my impression of Polly Bergen, giving her impression of Helen Morgan? No, I want you to give me your undivided attention. Today, you're just a listener. Now, here's the song, and I want you to hear it. All right? <clears throat> If you want the friendly comfort of a hand to hold, keep me in mind. If you want an arm around you when the nights are cold, keep me in mind. If there's any little thing that you want done, a song to sing and errand run, remember me. If you get that hey, feeling... Hey, Palmer's in town. I just saw him in the lobby. He looks worried, so I guess it went through. Here's your paper. Oh, drink. Thank you. Boy, am I proud of you, kid. You know what? If you asked him, they'd record you in a, in a drugstore. I told you this when I first signed you. I want you to, you know, now that you're on top, to push these guys. Make everything... Fergie, wait a minute, Fergie. Huh? There's nothing in the papers about last night. Fifty photographers shooting a carload of film, and nothing gets into the papers. Where's Warren? I don't know. Well, you'll find him. Get him up here, and if that's not him, you get on the Phone right, don't it. worry, I will. Make it quick. Okay, i yeah. got to talk to him about this. Oh, it's only Palmer. Thanks for the ovation. you welcome. Well, I, I got it through, Mike. They approved it. They approved it, Mike. Approved what? For you to record up here like you wanted to. They're sending up the portable equipment and the technicians to handle it. I told you, and I'll bet it'll be on every jukebox in the country. You'll see. I still think it would have been a lot easier and cheaper if we'd waited till we got to New York to record it. Oh, please, Lou. No penny pinching. This is Las Vegas, remember? And you can get around out of town for talk like that. Yeah, Mike, Mike, keep me in mind. We'll make a great opener for your new act. You know, you know I've been thinking the same thing, Jenny. Roxy, who? Fergie, where's Warren? But get him on the phone or get him up here. I want to talk to him. I spoke to Patty Cage about you doing your new record on a show. No! Good, good. You send it to Fergie and I'll be there. Warren, you're just the guy I want to see. What about when there's a good event for the press agent? Why, you think you're a press agent? Now, fun is fun and nasty is nasty. What's on your mind? This is on my mind. I dream up the stunt, the press covers it, the photographers shoot it, and nothing gets into the papers. There must be some part of this job that my press agent can handle. Look, Mike, I'm not married to you. If you're unhappy, you can call the whole thing off. Don't get huffy, Warren. All I want to know is why we didn't get any action. Oh, you didn't read the papers, did you? Look, I read every single one of them. We didn't even get that much coverage. You never read anything that doesn't have your name and your picture in it, do you? If you did, you'd realize why these publicity stunts are you, of yours are no good, even though we do get coverage on them. Warren, I don't want another one of your lectures on public relations. All I want to know is Let why we didn't get into the papers. the first to point out to you what silly little nonsense pushed you off the front pages. Bear hand killer strikes in Las Vegas. Policeman believed to be victim of sadists that terrorized Los Angeles. The assailant strangled policeman with bare hands. No clue to identity. Now, this guy had a great press agent. Everybody picked up that bare hand killer tag, and the inside pages are full of corny pictures of the widow and, and the five little children and corny stuff like that. song he's going to record? Yes. Keep me in mind. <laughs> Sounds like Mike Owen's battle cry to his public. Oh, please, Warren, don't be so hard on him. He 
really believes these things are important. Well, it's also important to our record company that Mike uses good taste. Just be patient, will you? Oh, Warren. Warren, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have jumped on you for something that couldn't possibly be your fault. I apologize. Oh, you see, he does have a lovable side. Just tell him you forgive him. Well, you didn't see me quitting, did you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Warren, I want you to set up a press conference for me this afternoon right here. Press conference? What about? Oh, it's going to be a big surprise, and I think it's better if you're as surprised as everyone else. <laughs> Kirby, I counted on you having enough sense not to show up for another Mike Owens press conference. I couldn't stay away. Me too. I know he's going to spring another overgrown publicity gag on us, but I have the same trouble with horror movies. I hate them, but I stay up all night watching them. Oh. Hello, Kirby. Hi, Warren. How are you? I like that one. Well, what's he up to, Warren? Well, I'm with you in the dark. All I know is that he said it was something big. The fat lady in the circus. He's going to marry her in Hollywood Bowl. Oh, 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 oh. Hold it. Don't let him hear. He's liable to do it. Come on, Warren. Admit it. Off the record. That boy of yours is the phony of all times, isn't he? I think oh, you are. Yeah, you know how these war, these newspaper men, they're always kidding. Always kidding. <laughs> you know, deep down in that 10% soul of yours, Ferguson, you know he has nothing worth calling a conference about. Admit that, at least, and try to pretend you're a man. Well, if you didn't think he had any news for you, why are you hanging around? It isn't the news, it's the booze. That thing, you're right. <laughs> and we all like Warren. We show up as a courtesy to him. I hope Mr. Owens realizes that. There's very little that Mr. Owens doesn't realize. Hi there, gentlemen. Hi, Warren. How do you do, lady? <laughs> Fergie, yep. Warren, everybody got something? Yep. Make sure, pass it around, because I don't like to see anybody without anything, and uh, especially don't like to see the fourth estate without a fifth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seriously, though, gentlemen, I'm very happy that you came. I know we've had our beefs in the past, but this time I've got something good. Something so great that I'm sure you're going to want to print it. Now I'll get right down to the facts. You've all seen the morning papers, no doubt. Patrolman Martin Lubau, the Las Vegas police force, was found strangled this morning in the alley near the corners of 6th and Main. The medical examiner places the time of death at approximately 3.30 in the morning. There are no clues to the identity of the murderer. So? I think I can describe the murderer. Oh. Oh, well, now, uh, uh, one of the first rules of the house is that we never take Mike's little jokes too seriously. Oh, wait a minute, Why, Warren. I'm dead serious. Now, i got to look at a guy who might have been that murderer, and I think I can identify him. Hey, Mike, how about a picture of you standing on the victim's body? All right, Millie, you, you're riding me again, but I happen to be serious this time. Now, I'll tell you what I might do. I've been thinking of doing something for the widow and the kids, you know, mm. helping out with money. Uh, you may be able to get some pictures of that. That does it for me. And that does it for the recording session, too. Mike can't come out with a title like Keep Me in Mind after this. Ah, oh, you're a worrier. Oh, look, I'm on the level. If you don't want to believe me, that's your privilege. Ask me what I'm doing. What are you doing, Miller? I'm exercising my privilege. Oh, wait a minute, Miller. Look, I... I tell you, I, I saw this guy because I drove downtown and I went to this little restaurant and then I saw this guy running down the alley just about the time and the place that the policeman said it was, too. 3.30 in the morning. And what did the police say when you told it to them, Mike? <laughs> I haven't told them yet. <sighs> so you didn't tell the police. Now that was smart. They might not like your idea of a publicity stunt. And I don't like it much myself. But you listen to my newscast tonight. I'll give you enough publicity to last you the rest of your career. Oh, wait a minute. Knock it off. If it was legit, you'd tell it to the police, not call a press conference. So I made a mistake. I should have gone to the police first. I thought I was giving you guys a break. But I'm not clowning. I really did see this guy, and I can't identify him. Now look! He stopped running right in front of my car. And when I put on my headlights, I saw him. He was big and husky, and he, he put up his hand to shield his eyes from my headlights. I swear it's true. He had a big S 
shaped scar in the palm of his hand. Mike Owens' continual quest for publicity has finally led him right down the sewer. Owens claims to have seen the killer of Patrolman Lubau and has even invented a description to go with the imaginary murderer. A large, husky man is what Owens started with, but that could be anyone. So Mike added a romantic, distinguishing touch, an S-shaped scar on the palm of the killer's hand. According to the police psychiatrist, a brutal, barehanded killing suggests an extremely demented person. We wonder how the police psychiatrist would characterize the twisted mind of a Mike Owens who has attempted to exploit a tragedy for Now your host for Plymouth, Bill Lundigan. Tonight we have with us Miss Betty White and Bill Williams from Plymouth's popular TV show, Date with the Angels. And they're here to tell you all about the new Plymouth, so let's meet the star of the forward look. And it's simply wonderful. Star of the forward look. This is the luxurious four-door sedan. Isn't the new grill beautiful? Everything about this new Plymouth is years ahead. This Plymouth Suburban is the biggest station wagon of them all, designed for any kind of a job. It has more new, exclusive features than any other station wagon in the low-priced field. A wonderful car to own and drive. And here's the new Plymouth convertible, just like mine. Never before has so much beauty and riding fun been built into any car. Just drive one. Yes, sir. One look, one ride, and you'll agree. There's no catching Plymouth now. Plymouth really is ahead for keeps. Plymouth! Car that's ahead for keeps. Car that's ahead for keeps. Plymouth! Star of the forward love! Why not see and drive the beautiful new Plymouth for 1958? at your Plymouth dealers tomorrow. And now we return to the second act of Climax, tonight starring Johnny Desmond, Marisha Pavan, James Dunn, Gil Stratton, and Jackie Coogan.
Thank you very much. I couldn't get out of here, so I decided to come right back. Uh, you've been a wonderful audience, and I'd like very much to sing you another song. But I want to be very honest with you this evening and uh, pass on a little advice that my mom always gives me before I leave home. She said to me just like this, Miguel, bed do to me. Pipiachi, if you're doing really good, please quit while you're still ahead. Thank you and good night. Hi, Warren. Fergie, come here. Huh? Come here, I want to show you something. Look, are we in trouble? Boy, are they really giving it to him? Ah, oh, we've been criticized before and we've lived through it. This isn't criticism. Boy, this is terrible. Kirby dubbed a man a bad taste for the year, and all the L.A. pictures are picking it up. Papers oh, well, that's not so bad. It's practically a compliment. In New York, in New York, he's the ghoul. In Chicago, he's the vulture. Look, you know all these guys, Warren. Can't you get them to lay off? I've done everything but try and steal a typewriter. Well, it'll all blow over when we open in New York tomorrow night. If we open in New York. You mean on account of this jazz? Look, it's bad, Fergie. It's bad. This thing is out of hand and Mike doesn't seem to know it. Look, a contract's a contract. We're going to open in New York. Now, don't you worry about it. You coming in? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Mike didn't think he'd have enough to do, so between shows tonight, he's running over the new numbers for uh, New York. No, I have something I want to finish. I'll catch up with you later. All right. Boy. 19, page 20. down, please. It's a ballad, but with a slight beat, okay? Do something to you, gentlemen. My go on, son. Please? If you want the friendly comfort of a hand. Fuzz. Oh, thanks. Excuse me a minute, Charlie. I'll be right back. I'm sorry to uh, put you gentlemen out of a nice uh, warm station house this way, but uh, this time I really got something important. I'll that. Approximately 3.30 a.m. It was exactly 3.30, and I know that for sure because uh, I brought the ham and egg joint that I was having breakfast in. I looked up at the clock up behind the counter. And as you passed the alley, you claim you saw the man who murdered Patrolman Lubau. I swear it. Last night you were willing to swear you had nothing to do with that phony attempt on your life. Look, I admitted that was a hoax, but this is on the level. All right, Mr. Owens. You called the department and we came over to hear your story. And I'll be hanging around until you leave town. That's official. Now I want to tell you something off the record. From me to you. I get to meet some pretty crummy characters. But a guy who'll dance on a man's grave for a free ride in the headlines is too much for my stomach. Those guys are hard to believe. Try and do them a favor and they get nasty with you. I'm in great shape. Did you see the way they looked at me? Oh, forget about it. What difference does it make? It makes plenty of difference. Look, Fergie, I've pulled some crazy stunts in the past couple of years, but never anything like this. If they can convince the public that I'd clown around with this kind of a thing, that's the end of Mike Owens, boy singer. Oh, it'll all come out in the wash, Mike. Now, what's with this record? Oh, I just got a piano demonstration of the song. <laughs> I'd, I'd like you and Ginny to hear it. I'll be through in here long before Ginny is in the lounge, so do me a favor, will you? Yeah. Bring her over to the room when she gets through. Yeah, hey, kid. You know, you promised me you'd get a little rest between the shows. Oh, look, Fergie, I'm too keyed up. I can't sleep now. I'll do that on the plane. All right, Charlie, let's try to get... Warren. Good, I'll catch her for you. Mike. 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 I've got a 
to talk to you. Oh, can't it wait a minute, Warren? Oh, can't. Well, it's just like I said, Charlie, we'll do it between shows when there's no interruptions and we can do a lot of work. Okay, what's it all about? Look, Mike, we're in trouble. The papers won't get off that bare hand killer story. I tried to get them off your back, but they won't budge. Don't worry, they'll forget about it. But a lot of harm can be done in the meantime. Palmer's worried. Oh, goodness, Palmer's always worried. But this time he's got something to worry about. They're crucifying you, Mike. Well, you just tell them that it isn't nice, Warren. Doesn't this bother you? Of course it bothers me. Do you think my skin's so thick that the names they're calling me don't hurt? Well, I thought of something, and I think it might work. Good. Now, we couldn't call another press release, because press conference, rather, because nobody would show up. So I'm giving out this release and hoping for the best, from you to the general public. I'm calling the whole thing a misguided hoax rather than a publicity stunt. There's only one thing wrong with this, Warren. It's a lie. Oh, now, Mike, every time there's a murder, a million crack pots come along and they say that either they did it or they saw it done. And maybe they believe they did or maybe they even want their picture in the paper. But you're in a spot, Mike, not only with the police, but with the newspaper men and the public. Warren, you're trying to get me to back down on the truth and I can't do it. All right, Charlie, let's try it again, please. Oh, look, Warren, there's nothing for me to apologize about. I told the truth. I did see a guy I think might have killed that policeman. And it happened just the way I said it did. Mike, I disagree with you about your publicity tactics in the past. But bad taste is though not, they worked. And I got the credit for it. You pulled me up, Mike, and I'm very grateful for it. But I'm not going to let you pull me down. Now, if you don't give out this release, I'm through. Warren, what I said at the press conference is true. Getting to be a regular warrior like Palmer. Yeah. Uh, Ginny will be over 10 30. That's fine. You want to call off the piano bed, kid? <laughs> no. If I don't get it done now, I'll have to take this piano on the plane with us. <laughs> okay, Charlie, once again, please. Maybe we can do it this time. <laughs> With a new piano player? Yes. How near finished, I think. I don't know. Warren, what's wrong? What's the matter? Well, I just had a fight with Mike here. Put him back in the stack. Don't let him fight with Mike, Father. You have them all the time. It doesn't bother me, and it wasn't a little fight. It was a big one, and it doesn't bother me because I quit. Oh, Warren. Warren, I wish you hadn't. Mike needs you. Oh, you must be kidding. There's no one in this world that needs a press agent less than Mike. Uh, Mike, Mike does. But you're the only one who ever really argues with him. He needs an influence like you around. Won't you change your mind? Not a chance. Don't close the door on it, Warren. You're good for him. Yeah, but he isn't good for me. And he's not good for anyone else either. I can give you a lot better advice than you can give I'm me right sorry, now, sorry, Warren. I guess this isn't a good time to discuss these things with you, that's all. Oh, you know what I'm going to say, but you don't want to hear it. I guess that's because you know it's the truth. If you had any sense, you'd leave him too. He's no good. That's not true, Warren. Look, Mike has his faults, and we both know where they are. But he isn't mean or nasty or vicious. He has never hurt anyone except except maybe himself. I guess you're hopeless. You're going to have to find this out the hard way. Well, lots of luck. <laughs> Keep me in mind. Keep me in mind. If you want the friendly comfort of a hand to hold, keep me in mind. If you want an arm around you when the nights are cold, keep me in mind. If there's any little thing that you want done, 
song to sing at Aaron Run. Remember me, the old reliable one. Remember me, the old reliable one. The old reliable one. Now, if you get that lonely feeling when the day is through. For a moment, let's step into the world of fashion. And from the world of fashion comes this vision of loveliness. This Mary Costa models a gown designed especially for the occasion. Thank you, Bill. You know, styling is important in clothes, but it's just as important in automobiles, too. Now, I think you men will agree with that just as much as the ladies. There's a world of difference in automobile designing these days, but there's no question which car in the low-price field is ahead for keeps in beauty and in style. It's the magnificent Plymouth for 1958. Here is tomorrow's styling. Only a promise in other cars, but yours today in every new Plymouth. Just look at it. Your new Plymouth starts with this new, wide, impressive front end and sweeps back along the side with new, exclusive, silver dart styling. It's long, low, clean, and uncluttered. No hastily added pieces of chrome that you've seen on some of the other new cars. Plymouth's new control tower tail lights are both functional and distinctive, adding to the safety that is yours when you drive a Plymouth. Your Plymouth for 1958 is designed as a complete expression of years ahead styling that will still be years ahead for years to come. Just one look, one ride, and you'll agree Plymouth is really ahead for keeps in styling and in engineering too. There's just no catching Plymouth now. Visit your Plymouth dealers tomorrow. See, drive, and buy the star of the forward look, Plymouth for 1958. And now we return to the third act of Keep Me In Mind, written especially for Climax by Jerry Davis. Tried to strangle me, the murderer. Stand up, will you? Come. Sit down here. Get that chair up. Get him a brandy. He just got here in time. Convenient, wasn't it? It must have heard you coming and running. He, he probably went out the patio door. Oh, one more minute and I'd have been a goner. Drink it, Mike. <laughs> First you get a guy to take a couple of shots at you. Now you got cop killers running all around your room. Mike, what are you trying to prove? <laughs> the only one to believe me was the killer himself. Yeah, wait till the newspaper guys hear about this. In war, two Drink it, years. Mike. Drink it. Why would this murderer want to kill you, Mike? Because <laughs> he read in the papers that I saw him. He knows that it's true, and he knows that I can identify him. Well, if he reads the papers, he also knows that no one believes you. Well, maybe he thinks I can convince him after a while of... Maybe he thinks that 
They're trying to trick him. I don't know what he thinks. Oh, come on, Mike. It wouldn't be very smart of him to kill you. That might convince everyone you were telling the truth. Well, who said he was smart? Anybody that kills has to be gooped up in the first place. I don't know what he thinks. this a maniac breaks in here and half kills me and I have to sign an affidavit to convince you you think I made up this story about being attacked the same as I did about seeing a murder and staged a phony shooting and as far as I'm concerned Mike this whole thing has gone too far we've got records to okay. sell get and out. we've got an expensive recording Mike. session coming up tomorrow and I'm telling you Mike, all right, Palmer, get out. All right Mike, I'm relax. leaving will you relax please yeah, relax Relax, you know Palmer's always wrong. Of course, there's been a terrible bloodthirsty struggle here. You can see it all. Your suspenders are all broken and your ties open and your shirt's all torn. Oh, my... Mike. I see it in television all the time. But, of course, if you say that's the way it happened, then, uh... That's the way it happened. Okay, Bertie, get lost. With pleasure. Ginny, you're the only one. The only one in the whole world. Don't, don't, darling. Just relax, will you? It's like a nightmare. I gotta get myself killed before anybody's gonna believe me. And now Palmer and Ferguson. How do you like those two for friends? You do anything to get your name in the paper. You've told me that yourself. Now, even if it's true, you can't expect them to believe you, darling. You can't blame them. You had the boy, you cried wolf. Listen, Ginny. I'm not lying. This is no publicity stunt. The man that killed the policeman was right in this room. Will you believe me? Darling, it's true. Every word just the way I said it. All right, darling. That's good enough for me. Oh, sweetheart. I'd be lost if you didn't believe me. Mike, we better call the police. No, I can't get anywhere with the cops. The man who tried to kill you might try it again. Look, we're going to be out of here in the morning. Mike! I got one last show, and then that record date, and then goodbye Las Vegas. I mean, I thought at least three of those takes were perfect. Perfect ain't good enough for Mike. Okay, Mike, once again, if you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready anytime Mr. Ferguson can keep it quiet. All right, Mike, I got the door locked. All right, everybody, this is it. Keep me in mind, take nine. You want the friendly comfort of a hand to hold Keep me in mind Now if you want an arm around you when the nights are cold Keep me in mind If there's any little thing that you want done A song to sing and errand to run Remember me the old reliable one sad and blue keep me in mind and if I haven't made it clear yet then here is one more clue keep me keep me baby keep me in mind keep me in mind
That's it. Oh, oh, that's oh, a terrific accent. Oh, oh, that is fine. Oh, it's it's fine. fine. Oh, it's fine for me. Yeah, sure, it's fine for Mike, believe me. Now, look, hey, fellas, pay attention, will you? Hold it. If we all hurry, we can go right over to, Lu- to Luigi's and get a real good meal before we take off on the plane. That is if A&R is picking up the tab. Well, if the price is right, be my guest. <laughs> all right, fine. Hey, leave that equipment right there. We'll pick it up Mike, later. I'm telling you, it's perfect. Right on the oh, nose. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy, you want me to get your bag? Oh, I can manage, but I better hurry, darling. You were wonderful. See you tonight. <laughs> I got to go out front, Mike, and uh, excuse me, settle up at the desk. And uh, you want me to take this tape? No, no, me? no. Let me bring it, will you, please? I, I just want to hear it by myself just once. Oh, you're going to be just like Palmer. <laughs> I think you're there. right. <laughs> Mike Owens has made the headlines, and this time for real. This reporter once told Mike he'd use a black ribbon to write his obituary. Well, this morning it looks like that ribbon will have to be red, white, and blue. At 4 a.m., Mr. Owens single-handedly affected the capture of the killer of patrolman Lubau and turned him over to the Las Vegas police. So far, Mr. Owens has made no statement and intends to leave for New York this morning as scheduled. Before you go, Mike, I want to put it on the record. You've done this town a big favor, and we're all grateful. And that includes yours truly, the one with egg on his face. Now, on... You better check with Mr. Ferguson about the plane reservations. Yes, we're leaving this morning, yes. He's taking care of that, thank you. Hey, you know, Ferguson's going to blow its top. Oh, don't worry about it. It makes him feel important. Are you all right? Hello? Hi. It's fine. Ask him if he'll take his old job back. Mike wants you to come back to work. <laughs> Only if you accept his apology. Accept it? How soon can he get here? He's right downstairs. Hey, Warren, come on up, will you? Mike! No, no, wait. Mike, no, no, Mike no, no, boy, no, no, what this wait, is going to do to the sales to keep me in mind? Boy, you're a genius, a genius. Did it really turn out good? Turn out good, man. It's going to go two million. <laughs> I'll be happy with a half a million. <laughs> you want to know something, Mike? Out there, you got the biggest press conference of your career waiting for you. Oh, that's terrific. But uh, we'll let Warren take care of it. He'll be here in a Warren? couple of seconds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what makes me so happy? Every one of those guys that panned you, Miller, Kirby, Harvey, they're all out there waiting. Oh, 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 hold it out here. I know you'll come out and see you. What? From here on out, I'm just going to be a singer. 
You be the press agent, I'll be the singer, and I'll make a deal with you. If you don't do any singing, I won't do any more press agents. Oh, okay. that doesn't sound like the Mike Owens I used to know. Anyway, the first thing you have to do is go out and talk to them. Well, is it all right? You know, I mean, dignified and all that. <laughs> <laughs> this is news. This isn't just publicity. They'll probably want to know all about how you caught the murder and stuff like that. <laughs> Boy, I got a great idea. It just came to me. Hold it. Hold it now. Remember, I'm the press agent. You're the singer. Oh, yeah, but this is sensational, Warren. I, I'm not even going to tell you now. I'm going to wait to let you hear from the others. <laughs> Come on, Don't worry. Good to see you. Oh, good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, there. Oh. Hey, Miller, my How about it, Warren? What are you going to sing? Oh, no. Keep me, baby, keep me, yeah. Baby, keep me in In just a moment, you'll meet John Drew Barrymore, Julie Adams, John Barry Gray, and Susan Oliver in a preview of next week's exciting Climax program. Your new Plymouth is here now. You're ahead for keeps in a Plymouth. It's the leader of the low price three. You're ahead for keeps in a Plymouth. It's the smart car to see. The way Plymouth looks, the way Plymouth rides, no wonder everyone decides you're ahead for keeps in the Plymouth. In the car that's always you get behind the wheel of a Plymouth, and the smart one that's you, and the smart one that's you. Drive Plymouth today. See, drive, and buy the magnificent new Plymouth, star of the forward look at your Plymouth dealers now. Ladies and gentlemen, next week on Climax, two tests on Tuesday. It's a story of a man driven to desperation, a man who gambles his future, his family, his very life. If he fails, he is determined it will not mean his life alone. Oh, Dr. Monk, I, I'm so worried about Hermie. He ran out of the house, and, and I'm afraid he's going to do something crazy. I thought maybe he'd come to see you again before... Oh, Dr. Monk, I'm afraid he's going to hurt himself. Call the police at once. They'll find him. You don't need to worry. I've been proud of you as a teacher. I haven't minded the low salary and the long hours because I was proud. Well, I'm not proud of you now, Frank. And I don't think I ever will be again. I'm sick and I'm ashamed. Pam, even though you're certain at this moment you have every right to kill me, there's one thing keeping you from it. It's something I've forgotten you remembered. Isn't it, Herm? Mercy. Plain, simple mercy. What difference does that make? You know... Last up my life pretty good. I'll tell you something, Doc. I'm one of those guys who's only funny when he's not trying to be. I'm not trying now. I'm gonna kill you. Next on Climax, two tests on Tuesday. Written especially for Climax by Jerry McNeely and starring John Drew Barrymore, Julie Adams, John Barragray, and Susan Oliver. And incidentally, the song, Keep Me in Mind, which Johnny Desmond introduced on tonight's show, is now available at your nearest record store. This is Bill Lundigan saying thank you, and remember, be careful when you're behind the wheel. Don't end up behind the eight ball. the friendly comfort of a hand to hold keep me in mind if you want an arm around you when the nights are cold keep me in mind if there's any little thing that you are done a song to sing and errand run remember me Someone to lean on when you're 
sad and blue Keep me in mind And if I haven't made it clear yet Then here is one more clue Keep me, please keep me Baby, keep me in mind Climax was brought to you by Plymouth Star of the Forward Look and the Plymouth Dealers of America. A college education used to be the special privilege of a few people. A college education may soon again be the special privilege of a few people. Hundreds of thousands of intelligent boys and girls, maybe yours among them, may not get into any college, let alone the college of their choice. Why? Because there may not be enough room for them. Our colleges and universities are already overcrowded. And in the next 10 years, applications for admission will double. Colleges desperately need buildings, laboratories, scientific equipment, libraries, dormitories, classrooms, and most of all, more qualified professors. Help our colleges train America's future leaders. Support the college or university of your choice now. For a free booklet on how you can help, write to Higher Education, Box 36, Times Square Station, New York 36, New York. That's Higher Education, Box 36, Times Square Station, New York 36, New York. Friends forest fires destroy valuable timber needed for homes and other vital uses. They stunt young growing trees. They cause floods, wreck grazing lands, kill wildlife. They rob our country of her peace and beauty, seriously affect our nation's future security. And isn't it a shame that nine out of every ten forest, woods, and range fires are started by people? Yes, and most of these man-caused fires are due to just plain carelessness. They are started by travelers, campers, hunters, fishermen, farmers, ranchers, loggers, by American men, women, and children, folks like you and me. So let's all take Smokey Bear's simple message to heart. Let's all be careful with fire. As Smokey says, remember, friends, only we, you and I, can prevent forest fires. This is Art Gilmore speaking. Portions of this program were pre-recorded. Climax has been selected for viewing by our armed forces overseas and is a CBS television network production.